हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला प्रोग्राम आई एम डॉक्टर शुएब लुकमान फ्रॉम द काउंसिल ऑफ साइंटिफिक एंड इंडस्ट्रियल रिसर्च सेंट्रल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिसिनल एंड एरोमेटिक प्लांट्स लखनऊ टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन द मॉड्यूल लिपिड inborn errors of metabolism part 3 from the paper lipid metabolism the objective of the paper include to understand the inborn errors of fatty acid oxidation what are the long medium and short chain fatty acid oxidation defects and when and how the carnitine disorder takes place first of all we'll talk about the fatty acid oxidation defects the trio that is the mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation which is also abbreviated as mfao the tricarboxylic acid cycle the tca as well as the oxidative phosphorylation which occurs inside the mitochondria are the processes which are interlinked problems in the fatty acid oxidation leads to the increase energy demand and consequently the low production of ketone bodies which is an abnormal figure as depicted in the coming figure since the first description of carnitine palmitoyl transferase deficiency in 1973 there has been a steady increase in both the number of different fatty acid oxidation disorders recognized as well as the number of the affected patients identified the defects involving many of the different enzymes as well as the transporter proteins which are involved in the fatty acid oxidation have been described the clinical features in these patients are diverse and depends on the nature as well as several symptoms which are prevalent and related to the neuromuscular cardiac and the hepatic involvement the difference between the prenatal which is during the fetal life and neonatal life which is just after the birth especially in the case of lipid metabolism is drastically impressive lipids for fetal life that is before birth are entirely used for the anabolic pathways specifically in the cell growth as well as the synthesis for the differentiation of the tissues and are not used 
as a fuel for energy production as indicated by the fetal respiratory quotient of approximately 1. Thus, the drastic change is observed in the case of lipid metabolism of fetal life after birth. That is, the mitochondrial oxidation of stored fat while ketone biosynthesis becomes a crucial passage for the survival. This diagrammatic presentation shows how the defects in fatty acid oxidation takes place. On the right side we can see that fatty acid oxidation takes place in mitochondria and if any defect arises in mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation this causes an increased energy demand and abnormal low ketone production which results in severe acidosis and hypoglycemia as well as fasting. The defect in mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation also affect the oxidative phosphorylation process. Normally the mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation takes care of the repetitive shortening of acyl-CoA esters for the generation of acetyl-CoA, NADH and FADH2. The tricarboxylic acid cycle is the final common pathway in the oxidation of fuel molecules that produces acetyl-CoA. And acetyl-CoA is one of the key component of both the fatty acid biosynthesis as well as oxidation. Oxidative phosphorylation is the ATP synthesis process that occurs via the transfer of electrons from NADH and FADH2 which have been generated in mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation or the TCA cycle to oxygen over the electron transport chain and as a result of which there is a formation of ATP. The fatty acid oxidation defects mostly the beta oxidation occurs in the mitochondria and are of mainly three types. The first type includes the carnitine uptake defect which is the primary carnitine deficiency and occur because of three enzyme defects which are important in the carnitine shuttle. The problems associated with the processing of long chain fatty acids in which the problem is because of the main protein complex, the trifunctional protein. which is a trimer and thus are of two types. The trifunctional protein deficiency 1 and the trifunctional protein deficiency 2.
the medium chain acyl CoA dehydrogenate deficiency is also one of the most common fatty acid oxidation defect. All these defects associated with fatty acid oxidation can be seen in the pictorial representation at the right side of this slide. For heart and aerobically exercising skeletal muscle, fatty acids are the chosen source of energy. Further, as the steady supply of energy source by the means of the placenta is substituted by the series of discontinuous feeding Fat becomes an indispensable store of fuel during the long-term fasting for energy production. Developmental impediment in the maturation of fatty acid oxidation plays a significant task in the receptiveness of the normal neonate to hypoglycemia in the immediate postnatal time. Additionally, over a dozen genetic faults in the mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation have been recognized that may be present in the post neonate with life threatening diseases. But overall, if the beta oxidation is considered, there are main five types of fatty acid oxidation defects. which are mostly the number of carbon atoms in the fatty acids or the transport of fatty acids ranging from shorter chain having carbon 4 to 6 a medium chain 6 to 10 or long chain from carbon atom 10 to 12 and very long chain from carbon atom 12 to 80. Except very long chain fatty acid oxidation which primarily occurs in peroxisomes. The other types of fatty acid oxidation occurs in mitochondria. In this pictorial presentation, we can see that fatty acids are divided into four different types, short chain having four to six carbon atoms, then medium chain between 6 to 10 carbon atoms, long chain between 10 to 12 carbon atoms and very long chain from 12 to 18 carbon atoms. The short chain fatty acid is governed by ACADS gene 
whereas the fatty acyl CoA dehydrogenase of medium chain is governed by ACA DM gene. The ACA DL gene regulates the fatty acyl CoA dehydrogenase of the long chain fatty acid, whereas ACA DVL gene regulates the fatty acid acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase of very long chain fatty acids. Long chain fatty acid oxidation. The long chain fatty acid oxidation defects can be due to the defect in one of the enzyme of protein trimer complex or the trifunctional proteins TFP. This protein complex is made up of three protein units. The first is the long chain enoyl coenzyme A hydratase. The second long chain L3 hydroxy acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase and third the long chain 3 ketothiolase. The first long chain enoyl coenzyme A hydratase causes the hydration of the long chain esters whereas the second long chain L3 hydroxyacyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase causes the oxidation of long chain substrates. The third enzyme of the protein unit of the trifunctional protein, long chain 3 ketothiolase, causes thiolytic cleavage of the 3 keto acyl CoA ester into acetyl CoA and an acyl coenzyme A that is 2 carbon unit shorter. The trifunctional protein is specific for long chain fatty acid oxidation. And it is composed of 4 alpha and 4 beta subunits. And it is the trimer protein catalyzing the three steps. The first step is the long chain 3 hydroxyacyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase, which is abbreviately known as LCHAD. The second step of long chain enoyl CoA hydratase, abbreviately known as LCEH. And the third is long chain thiolase which is abbreviately known as LCTH. The first two enzymes are encoded with HADHA gene and it comes under the trifunctional protein deficiency type 1. While the third enzyme is encoded by the HADHB gene and it comes under the trifunctional protein deficiency type 2. The trifunctional protein deficiency type 1 is because of defective long chain 3 hydroxyl acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase deficiency which is a rare genetic autosomal recessive disorder. 
which occurs because of mutations in HADHA gene. And this disorder causes the damage of muscles, liver, retina and heart. The characteristic aspect of this deficiency is hypoglycemia and lethargy. The relationship between long chain mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation with the oxidative phosphorylation is being depicted in the following figure, ultimately leading to the lactic academia and gluconeogenesis. The long chain mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation defect as shown in this diagrammatic representation can be broadly classified into two long chain mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation intermediate and long chain acyl coenzyme A esters. The long chain Mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation intermediate inhibits dicarboxylase carrier, whereas the long chain acyl CoA enzyme esters inhibits the adenine nucleotide transporter. Further, the dicarboxylate carrier inhibition leads to the inhibition of succinate driven oxidative phosphorylation, whereas the inhibition of adenine nucleotide transporter decreases ADP and thus ATP ADP ratio increases. And this increase in the ratio of ATP to ADP increases pyruvate phosphate dikinase, increases pyruvate carboxylase, and inhibits the oxidative phosphorylation. As a result of pyruvate phosphate dikinase increase and pyruvate carboxylase increase, there is an inhibition of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and lactic acidemia and gluconeogenesis respectively. The medium chain fatty acid oxidation defects. Similar to that of long chain fatty acid oxidation, the medium chain fatty acid oxidation, there is no trifunctional complex but separate enzyme doing their function. This is the most common type of fatty acid oxidation present in childhood. And the symptoms appeared by triggering by a period of catabolic stress like exercise, fasting or illness. Ultimately, it leads to neurological problems. The relationship between median chain fatty acid oxidation defects and oxidative phosphorylation is shown in the diagrammatic representation on the right side of the slide. The medium chain acyl-CoA esters inhibits the complex 3. At the same time, it inhibits also adenine nucleotide transporter. The inhibition of adenine nucleotide transporter decreases the ATP-ADP ratio and there is an increase in the ATP-ADP ratio. This increase in ADP, ATP to ADP ratio increases pyruvate phosphate dikinase, inhibits pyruvate dehydrogenate complex as a result of its lactic acidemia results. Also, the ATP-ADP ratio increase increases the pyruvate carboxylase which enhances the gluconeogenesis process. The increase in ATP-ADP ratio also inhibits the oxidative phosphorylation process. The short chain fatty acid oxidation. It's a very uncommon fatty acid oxidation defect and the outline of the after effects of short chain fatty acid oxidation leads to lactic acidemia and gluconeogenesis as well as it inhibits the oxidative phosphorylation process. 
as shown in the diagrammatic representation. The short chain mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation defect can be understood under two categories the short chain acyl CoA esters and short chain fatty acids. The short chain acyl CoA ester inhibits the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, which results in lactic acidemia, whereas short chain fatty acid increases the pyruvate carboxylase and thereby enhancing the gluconeogenesis. Also, this short chain fatty acid inhibits the adenine nucleotide transporter, decreases the ADP concentration and thus increase in the ATP-ADP ratio, which further inhibits the oxidative phosphorylation process. Since the first description of carnitine palmitoyl transferase deficiency in 1973, there has been a steady increase in both the number of different fatty acid oxidation disorder that has been recognized as well as the number of affected patients identified. The defects involves many of the different enzymes as well as the transporter proteins involved in fatty acid oxidation have already been described. The clinical features in these patients are diverse and depends on the nature and the severity of the biochemical defect. However, the most prevalent sy symptoms are related to the neuromuscular, the cardiac, and hepatic involvement. Let us see the carnitine uptake defect. The carnitine is mostly present in meat and it is obtained from the diet and distributed to the tissues, to the cells, to the organs by blood. It can also be synthesized inherently from the lysine and methionine amino acids. The overall steps and the importance of the carnitine shuttle is being depicted in the following figure. In this pictorial representation, one can see how the carnitine is involved in the translocation of acyl CoA from the cytosol to the mitochondrial matrix. Acyl carnitine converted to carnitine with the release of acyl CoA, and this carnitine is translocated inside the mitochondrial mitochondria and then further moved to the cytosol where it again binds to acyl CoA and get converted to acyl carnitine and translocated to the mitochondrial matrix. The acyl CoA from the cytosol to the mitochondrial matrix and there are two isoforms of the enzyme carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1 and carnitine palmitoyl transferase 2 that are responsible for the translocation of carnitine from the cytosol to the matrix of the mitochondria. The carnitine uptake defect and there are three principal types of carnitine deficiencies. First is the carnitine acyl carnitine translocase deficiency. 
which is results due to the mutation in the SLC25A20 gene and this causes the mutation in the gene causes the defective carnitine acyl carnitine translocase protein the second type which is the carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1 deficiency is results due to the mutation in the CPT2 gene the acyl group is transferred from coenzyme A to carnitine by carnitine palmitoyl transferase also known as carnitine acyl transferase 1 an enzyme of the outer, outer mitochondrial membrane The third is the carnitine palmitoyl transferase 2 deficiency which happens due to the mutation in the CPT1A gene an enzyme of the inner mitochondrial membrane and catalyzes the transfer of the acyl group from carnitine to coenzyme A in the mitochondrial matrix thus regenerating the free carnitine. We can see here that long chain fatty acid when enter a cell it is converted into the cytosol to its coenzyme A derivative by long chain fatty acyl CoA synthetase or the thiokinase. It is an enzyme of the mitochondrial membrane. Then, in further sequential reaction, because the beta oxidation occurs in the mitochondrial matrix, this long chain fatty acid must be transported across the inner mitochondrial membrane that is impermeable to coenzyme A. which further through a specialized carrier transport the long chain fatty acyl group from cytosol into the mitochondrial matrix and this carrier is a carnitine and this rate limiting transport process is called the carnitine shuttle. The carnitine deficiencies resulted from the limited ability of various organs and tissues to use the long chain fatty acids as a metabolic fuel. It is because of many reasons like food intake which consists of least carnitine mostly present in persons suffering from the malnutrition or people strictly taking vegetarian diet. The deficiency in hereditary carnitine deficiency can be because of the mutation in carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1 carnitine palmitoyl transferase 2 or SLC25A20 gene which results in the defective carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1, 2 and carnitine acyl carnitine translocase enzyme. In this pictorial presentation one can see the broader boxes which describe the short and medium chain beta oxidation, the ketone synthesis, the long chain beta oxidation and the carnitine cycle. There is a crosstalk occurs between the plasma membrane to the cytosol and to the mitochondria for the lipid metabolism to happen. Long, short and medium chain fatty acids get oxidized through the beta oxidation whereas acetyl-CoA plays a key role in the beta oxidation in the ketone synthesis as well as in the biosynthesis of the fatty acid. Carnitine transfer the acyl-CoA through the carnitine shuttle. and as a result of which 
a lot of energy is generated which is utilized in the for the energy production any defects in the enzymes catalyzing the lipid metabolism results in the metabolic disorders or the inborn errors of lipid metabolism that we have already ex explained and discussed so students in this module we have learned and discuss about the defects that are associated with the fatty acid oxidation the defects associated with short chain fatty acid oxidation medium chain fatty acid oxidation and long chain fatty acid oxidation we have also focused on the carnitine uptake defects which is probably seen in people who are strictly on vegetarian diets and these defects will lead to the inborn errors of metabolism of lipids and which is a problem that needs to be addressed thank you